Hello, I'm Ricky Colquitt with Alabama Cooperative Extension System. I've been asked to talk with you today about bead confirmation as it pertains to replacement heifers. Whenever we think of replacement heifers in terms of developing those from a production standpoint, there's, there is absolutely no reason you, as producing a heifer, should not be willing to keep anything that you're willing to sell. If she's not good enough for you to keep, she's not good enough for you to sell. So keep that in mind as we move forward with this conversation. But when we get into confirmation, what we're actually doing is we're seeing the phenotype of the animal, not the genotype. EPDs are going to tell us more about the genotype. So what we're seeing here is in terms of expression. So whenever we talk about confirmation and structural correctness, let's just let's just start at the bottom and work our way forward. If we look down here to, at our hooves, we see we've got our two toes, we've got distance between them. Uh, we don't have any curling because if we have curl going on there, we could have some genetic problems, primarily screw call. And that is highly heritable and highly undesirable. So we want to avoid that at all costs. As we move our weight up from the hoof into the pasture, we want that pasture set at a proper angle because everything about cattle being able to function is about angles. If these angles are not proper, as these cattle get bigger and grow and mature, they begin to hurt. That skeleton begins to straighten out. So anything that we can do to keep them feeling good and keep them growing properly, they're going to be more productive for not only you as the seller, but also your potential buyer. So we, we work our way from the, uh, from the pasture on up to the cannon bone. The set of the hock is very important. We do want a slight curve, but not a tremendous curve. A big curve would be something like a sickled hock condition. Once again, highly heritable. All right, moving from there, we move on up into the pen from the stifle to the hooks. This area here, everything here moves to a certain degree. It's the reason those angles are important. Straight here as possible. Now there is some breed differences here. Some of these Brahmin influenced cattle, like these quality Brangus heifers we have here, they may have a little, little bit more of a drop in the pins. So we have a more of a slope from hooks to pins. It's kind of a breed characteristic. Then if we move from our hooks back down into our flank, we want to make sure we've got really deep really deep rear flanks. Uh, we want that we want that uh, that really deep sided bowl sprung look on the ribs. We've got a lot of spring to this heifer's ribs moving forward. We want her level over her top. We don't want her broken here uh, in front of her hooks. If we move forward here behind her shoulder, she gets a little off there in terms of I'd like to see her a little tighter, a little square up through that shoulder, but I think it's just the way she's standing in this awkward position. So then we work our way down from top of the shoulder down to the fore flank. And from here, we're talking depth to fore rib, spring of fore rib. This is very important that we keep these cattle um, with a lot of volume and dimension to them because they not only have to hold the calf in here, produce that calf, they also have to consume enough forage in their diet to make sure that she's getting adequate nutrition. Now from the, the way the shoulder blends in to the neck is very important to me and females. I want my females to look like females. So uh, the, the, the angularity of this from here to here is very important. Once again, we get back into our angles. If we straighten this angle too much, yes, we can get these cattle tall quick. What happens is we start to, with genetic selection, we can change this angle. So every time she takes a step, the shock absorber is gone. She doesn't feel good, she won't eat. This is an excellent slope of shoulder. This is kind of what we're after right here. So moving from there, length of neck, we want a feminine face on a heifer, uh, not so much on a bull. We're looking for a little bit more masculinity, a little bit more muscle there. And furthermore, on a female, we want to, a lot of people want to take it to the other extreme, possibly with too much muscle, too much volume. And now uh, too much muscle, too much meat packaged in here. If we get into a female that's that muscular, we can run into calving problems and a lot of other issues. So once again, we want to stay in moderation, everything in moderation. Uh, moving on down, as we move back down here into our knee joint and into our pastures in the front, the same as we had in the back, proper angles, proper slope. As we, as we analyze this female, there's not a lot of holes in her. She's very good, excellent female. And from the back, as we analyze these females, we want to look from their pins down through their hock. Ideally, we'd be able to like to drop a plumb ball and it dissect the leg all the way down and as we look here we can tell this heifer is slightly cow hawk not bad 
But it's a condition we find in a lot of beef cattle. It's not a detriment, but it is heritable. We want them as square on his back feet and legs as we can get them. She's got just a little sit with the hocks turning in toward each other. That's the condition known as cow hock. And as we work our way forward, we can look at that internal, we can look at that width and thickness that we find from end to end. We can also look at the, at the spring of the rib, as, as we can see it from the rear. We can look at the width over our top. We can look at how this shoulder ties into the neck, moving forward out over the pole. Not so much on the front, but uh, nonetheless, we're looking for the same things here. When we, when we get to the front, once again, we want to be able to, from the point of the shoulder, through the front of the hoof, we want to be able to drop a bob, a, a plumb bob, and dissect that leg if, if at all possible. Another point, as we, as we look at replacement heifer development and that we're developing, we want to check out this udder to make sure everything looks, we want four evenly spaced teats. Uh, as you look in between this heifer's rear legs, we see that she has a teeth. They're hanging, uh, hanging perpendicular for the most part. One other thing, I want to give a plug to uh, to my organization that I work for, Alabama Cooperative Extension. There's a publication, Beef Confirmation Basics. It's available on our website, which is aces.edu. This is a great publication who was put together by one of our regional extension agents, Mr. David Daniel and Dr. Lisa Chris Anderson. Also, if you live in the state of Alabama, you are covered from by a regional yeah. extension agent with, a, with this vast amount of knowledge that we've discussed today. Feel free to reach out to them off that same website, or you can simply call your county extension office locally.